Hey, dude, you see my Pepsi Max? Yeah, it's on your desk next to that TV playing Marky Mark. Did you just vibe? What did you see? A new film learning episode. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And today, I'm feeling some good vibrations, just like those Beach Boys. Which is handy, because according to this poll I posted on Twitter, it's the effect you'd like to see this week. And hey, if you didn't vote, don't feel bad. You can always catch the next one by following me on Twitter. So in order to complete this effect, you really just need to shoot your actor pretending to vibe out, then separately shoot them in the vibe zone doing whatever the hell you want really. Now when filming in the vibe zone, you do have the option of placing some practical lights in the scene like me to enhance the lens flares later, or you can just fake it in post. It's up to you. Now, to create said flares, I'll be using Nolite Factory EZ from Red Giant Universe, but if you have optical flares or another program, feel free to use that. And of course, for those who don't have either, I'll be giving out some stills of flares for you to use. Now, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, I've already got my comp set up here and ready to go. As you can see, the first shot we'll be building is our vibe out, or vibe on, or whatever it is. Now you might notice I've shot mine with the eye footage rig, but you can do this handheld or however you like, but it's important to have some motion in the frame to really sell that effect. Now, our first port of call is to add the flares to our shot. Now the reason I'm not using optical flares is pretty simple. I don't have it installed at the moment. So let's head to Effect, Universe Stylize, and add No Light Factory EZ. I'll then change the flare from Hallows right down to Order Up. We'll then scrub forward a couple of frames until I see my light source, and from there, we'll simply click the target on light location and stick it right on my light source right here. We'll then head back and hit the stopwatch on light source and then just scrub through the timeline, adjusting our flare so that it sticks right on that light. We'll then finish up by heading back to our first frame and moving the flare off screen completely. If we check out a preview, you can see that it's sticking nicely. Now guys, don't be too concerned if you don't have a practical light in your shot, but it really isn't that hard to put one in. That light there, it's just a torch that I put in the shot. And to be honest, having a practical light source in the shot to put your flare on is a hell of a lot easier. Just my two cents. Now if you like, you can add a couple more flares by following the exact same steps. I'm gonna add one more flare, and by filmmaking magic, a la editing, BAM! It's already there. Now our next step is to animate the size of our flares, as they should increase in size or brightness as the shot plays forward, and that's easy too. All we have to do is set up the flare scale, hit the stopwatch, and bust the flare down to say 0.2. Head forward, say, 10 frames, and increase that size to around 2. And then, if you feel like it, scrub right to the end of the comp and crank it up to, say, anywhere from 2.5 to 3. I'll then do the same with the second flare. There we go. And if we check out a preview, you can see over time our flares really start to pop. Okay, now our next tip is to add a new adjustment layer, because it's time to add some of that cool blue colour grading to our shot. And don't worry, I'm not going to use any fancy pants software this time. In fact, I'm going to go low tech and head up to effect, color correction and add photo filter. From there, I'll set the filter to custom and change the color to a darkish blue. Now since I really don't think that's blue enough, I'm going to duplicate that effect, but this time I'll crank it down to say 79%. That looks pretty good to me, but have a play with your shot because these settings may not suit yours. And finally, I think I'll bump the brightness down and contrast up a little. So guess what I'll be using? That's right, head to effect, color correction, and grab brightness and contrast. Now all I'll do here is just bump the brightness down and the contrast up. There we go. Our last step with color is to animate the opacity of this adjustment layer to ramp up as our flares brighten. To do this, we'll select set adjustment layer, hit T to bring up opacity, rank it down to zero, Hit the stopwatch, we'll then head to around the halfway point of our comp and then crank this bad boy back up to 100. Now, let's check out a preview. Not bad. Now gang, I don't care if you use a different method for colouring the scene, I just wanted to show you another method as opposed to all the standard ones and using sort of external plugins. Our last step in augmenting our shot is adding a blur overlay. In order to do this, we'll head up, grab a new adjustment layer, stay up there, and then we'll add a camera lens blur. We'll then crank it up a little more to get a nice blur going, and be sure to check repeat edge pixels. 
let's then grab the pen tool and draw some rough masks around our shot, like so. Maybe one right across the middle too. We'll then collapse down the mask menu and change the transfer mode on each of these masks to add. And then of course, we'll hit F and feather them out to say 50 to 100 pixels. That way, they'll blend much easier into our shot. From there, just as we did with our previous adjustment layers, we'll animate the opacity of this one too. You know how, hit T, hit that stopwatch, crank it down to zero, skip ahead a touch, and right back up to 100 again. And what you're left with is this. So as you can see, this shot looks pretty cool, but what makes a vibe effect is that choppy editing and of course, the trademark sound. Now we could do all this in After Effects, sure, but Premiere Pro exists and it's amazing, so let's do it in that because it's an editor for editing. Now before we head over to Premiere, I just wanted to mention that I've also made the three other shots you saw in the opening. This shot of me staring at myself talking to the camera, this close up of me, and of course, me coming out of the vibe itself. All of these have the same flares and color grading a la our vibe shot. The only difference being is that they don't have the opacity animated, except for the coming out of the vibe shot, which is basically all the steps we did previously in reverse. So instead of the flares getting brighter and the color filter and blurring fading in, they fade out. You can also add an expression to the flare scale to make it flicker if you like. I've done that in my close up shot here. And that expression is wiggle, space, bracket, nine, comma, two, end bracket. But like I said, only do that if you want to. It's not a big deal if you don't. Now, let's head over to Premiere. Alrighty, here we are in Premiere Pro. I've got all my footage ready to go, as well as a sound file and this bit of footage called Guide Layer. So what's that? Basically, I've made a quick example template to show you when to cut your footage. As you can see, if we play through, it says Vibe Footage, then goes to White and says No Footage. Cuts back to saying Vibe Footage again, and some frames even say POV Footage. So how do we use this? Well, let's jump in and get started. My first step is to throw our Vibe Clip on V1. Once that's in, grab that guide layer and put it right on top on V2. We'll then scrub along the timeline until we get our first prompt that says no footage. Hit C on the keyboard to bring up the razor tool and then we'll make a cut. We'll then scrub forward a few more frames until the vibe footage title returns. We'll make another cut and we'll delete that footage in between those two cuts. Let's then scrub along the timeline and make the same sort of cut each time you see an instruction on the guide layer like so. What you'll be left with is something like this. Not bad, but it's not quite done. We need to add a couple of frames from our POV shot to our vibe shot to complete the vibe effect. So let's scrub along the timeline and we'll find our first POV prompt right here. We'll then select our POV shot from the project window, double click to add it to the source window above, and let's just cut a small portion using the in and out markers. There we go. We might move our guide layer up to V3, and then we'll drag that POV shot onto the timeline in the spots we need it. From there, let's trim those POV clips so they fit within our guide layer. Just make sure they only last the amount of time the guide says. And when you're done, let's delete the guide layer and check out our shot. Nice. Now all we have to do is cut in our POV shot, follow that up with our close up like so, maybe cut back to our POV shot, and then of course, drop in our vibe out footage. Now guys, quick cherry on top, all I'm gonna do is add a quick transition from my uh, POV footage to my vibe out footage, and that's called a dip to white. I'm gonna drag and drop that on our footage right here, and then I'm gonna shrink it down, so basically it'll just be a flash of white, and then we're into our vibe out footage. Totally a personal preference, but I just think it adds a little bit more to the shot. Our last step is to add that sweet sound effect to the shot, and if we check out a preview, you've got yourself a finished shot. Now one last thing, and guys, this really is just a cherry on top. What you can do is grab that POV footage, grab the razor tool, and cut one frame, just randomly, head over to the effects controls, and scale it up like 140%. That way you get that nice little bit of glitching. But once again, totally up to you. It's very easy to do, so go for it if you like. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. 
Hey, dude, have you seen my Pepsi Max? Yeah, it's on your desk next to that TV playing Marky Mark. <laughs> Did you just vibe? So that's my take on Cisco's vibe effect from the flash. It's basically just an editing technique with some color correction and a few flares and a couple of adjustment layers. Not hard, but it's a nice change of pace from our usual stuff. As always gang, thank you so much for watching. If you peek down below, you'll see we're not far off the 30,000 subscriber mark. So stay tuned for a special announcement. Once again, here's the Facebook, here's the Twitter, and until next week when I stop a laser blast with the force. Keep learning.